The Colburn Bible, Book of Morals and Precepts, Chapter 5, Man. Consider yourselves, my children, and meditate on the reason for your existence and the purpose for which you were brought into being. Contemplate your powers, ponder your circumstances, discover your inescapable duties, and face your earthly obligations. Assume your burdens cheerfully, for they are not imposed capriciously. The one God has set a hard task, but it is not beyond your capabilities. Remember that every affliction, however grievous and seemingly unnecessary, serves a purpose and an end. O oh man, you are the delight and sorrow of your God. You have been set apart with peculiar favor and exalted above all other creatures. He has endowed you with reason to maintain your dominion. He has bestowed upon you the faculty of speech, that wisdom may accumulate throughout your generations. He has exalted your mind so that it may be perceptive of beauty and grandeur. He has ordained the law which circumscribes your life and adjusted your nature to accord with your duties and destiny. Each man is an individual work of God, his mind a fragment of his will. The breath of God gives him life. The soul God formed you as he fashioned the beasts of the field and forest. He made you last and placed you at the pinnacle of creation. Command and jurisdiction over all were given unto you. From among the creatures of the forest and beasts of the field, you ascended in triumphant superiority, and your yoke is upon them. Be aware of yourself as the pride of God and the fruition of his desire. Nothing greater shall be created on earth. You are the vessel containing the essence of divinity, fashioned with the clay of matter. Behold, you have even the nature of God within you and partake of his substance. Remember, therefore, your superior estate. Maintain the pride and dignity befitting your position, and descend not to any mean or degrading thing. Remember, my children, that every man, whatsoever his nation or estate, is a man. Therefore, never degrade anyone, for even the least among men is candidate for Godhood. Man can be whatsoever he wills, subject to the law. There is no limitation on man's potential achievements. Shoot for the moon and not for the treetops, for nothing is beyond your reach. Did God appear to man on earth and man cast a spear at him? He would not blast man with wrath, but admire him for his audacity. Such is the attitude of God towards man. Thus God has made him. Therefore, is it meet that man should fawn upon him with servility? Man has the powers of reason and decision. A wise father delegates responsibility to his children, and God does not unduly interfere in the affairs of men. Man is the Lord of creation and the heir to Godhood. He can soar to the greatest heights, but also fall to the lowest depths. No man is wholly good, and no man is wholly evil. 
The scales are never completely weighed down. No man can hold any desirable thing on earth or attain it in the regions of light without the expenditure of effort. No man can foresee the future or know what test the wise God has placed there for him. O oh man, mark this well. Never forget your goal of Godhood, but vaunt not your God-likeness. For the beast dogs your footsteps, and an animal clothes your soul. You dwell beneath the dark shadow of the cloud of mortal ignorance. You live in a twilight dream state. You are deceived by your senses. You dream and say, this is reality. You reason and are afraid. But know that all things real reside in God, and His wisdom stands beyond the bounds of reason. He has established the foundations of truth and reality for eternity. <clears throat> My children, man is not flesh and bone alone, but something more something far greater than he could ever perceive at present. The eagle soars in the air above, not knowing that soon he will descend to earth and rise no more. The lion is unaware of the worms that will consume it, and the ox knows not of the slaughterhouse. The ass knows not of the use of food, though its teeth chew and grasses, the grasses and herbage. Something is added to mere man to raise him above the beasts. Something else with, exists within the space of his body. It is his soul. Is not the mortal substance of the body less perfect when the soul has departed? Now it will decay and fall apart. But is this not because the animating spirit is no longer there? The immaterial spirit has gone. Whence has it flown? The spirit departs, taking life and consciousness with it. That which came from the abode of spirit has returned there. That which God gave of himself has returned to its source. Man, the, recept the receptacle of God and beast, has sundered apart at the touch of death, and each returns to its own. Man is the highest of the beasts and the lowest of the gods. Man is the battleground of beast and god. 